Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell, and today we're going to be talking about some really useful but often underutilized Power FX formulas, especially for new Canvas app makers. In this video, I'm going to cover four formulas that I feel often get underutilized but are really useful and make your life easier. Make sure you leave a comment below if I missed any and you'd like to see those included in the next video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so jumping right into my screen, and I have a very simple use case here today. I just wanna show a list of users, but I wanna show you some really cool formulas that often get underutilized in PowerFX by new Canvas app makers. Hopefully these formulas give you some cool ideas for how to make your apps even better. So on the left here, I've just got a, uh, a little table here of all of the formulas we're gonna be talking about today. We're just gonna breeze through these four underutilized PowerFX formulas we have if error, substitute, coalesce, and switch. Now, one of the problems that I had as a new app maker was when I had a list of my users, maybe from Office 365 users or pulling in a choice column from SharePoint that has people in it, if I wanted to display that person's image, you have to add in a connector for Office 365 users and pull in that user's image. Now that's all well and good, everything works great until you start searching for that person. If I start searching, you'll see that I get an error at the top of my screen saying, this user photo V2 has an invalid value for the parameter of ID. Now I know that's not true because once the app took another second to load, we'll see that it did find this user, it found my ID and it loaded my picture. So I know that API connection is working it's just sometimes if it's going too fast, it can't immediately find that person, it's gonna throw up that error. Same thing if I search for Devin, I get the same issue. An error has occurred. I know as the app maker that it's not really an error, but your users aren't gonna know that. Your users might be confused or annoyed that every time they search for people, they get this red error at the top of their screen. So let's use the first formula here in our cool formulas list to tell how to overcome that issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at the code for this photo and we'll see that it's using the office 365 users dot user photo V2 rest API to find this user's photo. We're using this item dot ID. So that is the ID of the user that it found for this record. Now that works and it's not giving me an error until I go to play the app and I search for that user. So what I can do is since I know that it is actually working, the app just needs a second to kind of catch up. I'm going to put all of this inside of an if error statement. So I'm going to say if error and the value is this photo. So if that results in an error, what do we want to do? Well, this is the image property of an image control. So I could either put in sample image, I need to give it either an image or something that's blank. So I'm going to just do blank, just show no photo if it can't find it. That's literally all there is to it. Now the app recognizes that, Hey, sometimes this does result in an error. And when that happens, just show blank. And what if it shows blank, that's not an error. It's just showing a blank image. So there's no error being displayed to the user. So now if I go in here and I search for Nate, I do it really quick. You'll see it takes a second to load the photo, but it still pulls up. If I search for Allison, I search for Matt, it never returns that error. It allows time for the app to catch up and to load that image, getting rid of that pesky error. There's one out of the way, if error, great formula to use to improve your user's experience with your app. All right, next formula I wanna talk about is the substitute formula. A lot of times you will pull in fields in a table and it might contain certain text that you don't really care about or you don't want, or it's the same every single time, so you wanna get rid of it. So for the example we have going on here today, let's just add in another label to this gallery. I'm just going to stick with the classic label here. And this is in my gallery and it's trying to display this item dot city. So instead let's do this item dot department. Let's 
stretch this out, give it some more room. All right, so now I've got this item dot department in here for the list of users. And if I remove my search criteria, you'll see that everyone that has a department listed at Pragmatic Works, it starts with the word trainer dash. So we have trainer dash Power BI, trainer dash Azure, trainer dash Power Platform. So that trainer dash is something that if it's the same for every single person, I don't really care about that. So to account for that, Let's look at the substitute formula. So this item dot department is the text, but let's wrap this in a substitute. And if we look at the roadmap up above of what this formula needs, we have to provide it with some text. We have to tell it the old text that we want to kind of substitute. And then the new text that we want to substitute that with. So the old text for all of these labels, it keeps showing me training dash. And I don't really care about that. So I'm gonna provide that as the old text. Fix my typo. And the new text that I wanna replace that with, I'll just put in a blank value there. Oh, it's trainer. Sorry about that. There we go. So now anytime it finds the word trainer dash, it's just gonna replace it with nothing. If it doesn't find it at all, it's not gonna do anything. So we've got Power Platform, Power BI, Azure. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Substitute, boom, out of the way. Now let's look at the coalesce function. When I first started building Power Apps, I found it really annoying to be constantly writing, if is blank, do this, otherwise do this. If is blank, this is a terrible pattern that I kept finding myself in over and over and over. So sticking with this department label, we have Power BI, Power BI, but for Alan, we don't have Alan's department listed here in Office 365 users. So the old me would have maybe said, all right, I could say if is blank, this item dot department, then put in unknown. Otherwise, put in this item dot department, right? It's a really clunky way of having to write that, especially when you have to write that over and over throughout your app. So let's take a look at a better way to do that with the coalesce function. The coalesce formula, all it does is it simply returns the first non-blank value that you provided. So if this is our value, then I'm gonna wrap this entire thing and I'll, I'll do some formatting text here. That's some of the feedback I get in my videos is I forget to format text to make it easier to read. So this is currently our formula that is producing the department without the word trainer. So if I wanna say if is blank this, rather than doing that, let's use the coalesce function. So coalesce, and then I just need to, this is the value that I wanna look at. And if that is blank, then just put in maybe unknown. That's all there is to it. Much easier than writing if is blank over and over. So Power BI, Azure, unknown, Power Platform, much better, much simpler way to do it. Coalesce, out of the way. Next, let's take a look at a switch statement. A switch statement is basically kind of like a nested if. So rather than saying, if this item dot department is equal to Azure, then I don't know, let's, let's, let's keep with this label here and let's look at the fill property. So rather than saying, if this item dot department equals Azure, then be color blue. Otherwise, if this item dot department is power platform, then be purple. Otherwise, if, that's just a terrible way to do it. A switch statement just says, hey, let's switch on this item dot department, and then we can provide all of the values and all of the results if that value is true. So to put this into context here, let's take a look at this label again, and let's go to the fill property. So rather than being just transparent, 
Let's do a nice switch statement. So first parameter here is which, what value do we want to look at since we're on the label? Let's just do self.text. Then we can provide a match value. So if it matches Azure, then comma, and then the matching result. So if, and since we are on the fill property, we have to provide a color here. So if this item is equal to Azure, then let's do color dot Azure. How about otherwise, if it's equal to Power BI, then let's do color dot light yellow. The next match value is let's do power platform. If it's equal to that, let's be color dot lavender. And the default results, if none of that is true, then let's just do color dot transparent. And once we close our parentheses, we have a perfect, nice, easy to write logical test here. So we have Power BI is yellow, Azure is Azure, Power Platform is lavender, everything else is transparent. And that's a switch statement. So hopefully, even if none of these examples are something that you're working on currently, it gives you some ideas for how to start using some of these a little bit more advanced formulas that once you actually get under the hood, they are not that advanced, they're very easy to write, and they actually make your life a lot easier as a Power App Maker. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.